Hey there everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I'm here to review 10 Things I Hate About You. So 10 Things I Hate About You has a huge cast. You have Heath Ledger, Julia Stiles, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Larry Miller, Allison Jenny for a brief time. And before I do get into my thoughts on 10 Things I Hate About You, my guest star Kevin Falk is going to be reviewing this film as well as giving you what the overall plot synopsis of this film is. So, Mr. Kevin Folk, take it away. You guys have seen me many times before. Uh, I am Kevin Falk. Uh, I do a lot of movie reviews and TV show reviews. That movie we're going to be reviewing, as Tony already explained, is the 1999 uh, romantic comedy classic, 10 Things I Hate About You. The plot of 10 Things I Hate About You is pretty simple. Basically, we have this girl, Bianca, and she really wants to date. You know, she's someone, you know, she's in high school. She really wants to date guys, but her father is very overprotective. One, because, you know, he's a father of, two, he's a single father of two daughters, but also because he is he works in a hospital and delivers babies and he's worried that his daughter is going to end up getting pregnant and she's kind of naive to that fact uh but she really wants to date this one guy and he basically tells her all right you can't date anyone until your sister cat starts dating now cat is about as antisocial and about as different from other teenage girls that someone could possibly be and she you know it's very much uh you know she's really um alienated a lot of people like she's alienated so many people in her school she's looked at as a freak and things like that so basically uh bianca decides to work with this guy um cameron and basically try to find a date for Kat and ends up uh, pairing her up with this guy, Patrick, who is also very weird and looked at as very strange and antisocial and, you know, rude and things like that. But things start to change when Kat and, pa when, uh, Kat and Patrick actually start to develop feelings for each other, and that's the basic plot of 10 Things I Hate About You. And I have to say, everyone really did do a good job. I don't really think there's anyone who gave a bad performance, but by far the absolute standout of this movie, I think really the glue that holds it together, is Julia Stiles as this character of Kat, who I absolutely love this character because she could have easily been this archetype you know type character where you know she's just negative all the time and things like that but that's not really who Kat is she's not someone who just can't find a guy no she simply doesn't want to be with a guy because she feels she's just going to take advantage of her and you know just try to have sex with her you know she doesn't see relationships as a two-person situation she sees it very one-sided and she just doesn't want to because of that and she's viewed as weird and different because she is very eccentric but at the same time i was very much on her side a lot of the a lot of times in this movie like i could really see where she was coming from and was she a bit annoying at times yeah but it's more about character growth than it is about the character overall i thought the character overall was very well presented if you guys don't know it actually is based on um a Shakespeare play, Taming of the Shoe, I believe, which I'll talk about that in the directing, but she really did an incredible job here, and especially when she starts to develop feelings uh, for Heath Ledger's character, you really actually are rooting for her. You really do want her to actually be with him because this is finally her chance to find a guy who's not just there to take advantage of her and who doesn't see her as weird. I really did love her overall. I thought she did a really good job, and then Heath Ledger in this movie is Patrick. I will admit, when I first saw him, I didn't really like him. I, I thought that his uh, acting in general, his acting goes in and now throughout the movie i think this is one of heath ledger's first movies um but he definitely did do a very good job and their chemistry is the by far the best thing about this movie i really did love their chemistry here i thought they worked very well together you could genuinely see these two cared about each other and just to see them throughout the movie getting to know each other and realizing things and finally seeing each other as more than just weird and finally having someone to actually latch on to it's honestly really beautiful to watch they really did do a great job they were very fun together they had some really nice lighthearted scenes and but also some very emotional scenes. I was surprised by how emotional the relationship really got. And I thought, for the most part, these two worked really well together. I really did love their overall relationship. Like I said, their relationship is by far the best thing about this movie. And if their relationship wasn't in this movie, this movie ne would not nearly be as good as it was. And mainly that is because of the rest of the cast, because as good as I think the other two actors are in this movie, their relationship doesn't hold a candle to that of Heath Ledger and Julia Stiles. I think their relationship definitely is the key relationship in this movie. The rest of the characters here are kind of lacking. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, I really did like him in this movie, which I was shocked to see a very, very young Joseph Gordon-Levitt, but he really did do a good job as this character of Cameron. He's in pursuit of Bianca throughout the movie. He's kind of looked at as the nerdy kid, and he's bullied and things like that that 
but he really wants to be with Bianca, and I thought he did a good job with that. I just found his character to be a bit lacking, I have to say. I didn't really feel like they had much of an arc with his character. You knew exactly where his character was going to go. The second he develops feelings for Bianca, you know what's going to happen there, especially because the guy that Bianca likes is very much into just, you know, it's just kind of your jock, uh, cock, cocky jock, basically. That's all he is. You know, he just wants to get with girls, and Cameron actually does want to be with Bianca, so you can tell really where their story is going to go. And I just didn't find his character to be that compelling, I'd say. There really wasn't anything for me to latch on to. Bianca, I thought, was actually a good character. I liked, um... I like Larissa Olenek in the role. I thought overall she definitely did do a good job. But again, she's your typical teenager. There really wasn't much else about her besides that. You know, she just wants to date, and she's insistent on doing that. She's very naive, and she doesn't, you know, she kind of just treats her sister the same because everyone else does. I just didn't really find much about her character. I feel like it could have peeled back the layers a little bit more, but they really didn't. And that it's mm -hmm. the case for most characters in this movie. Aside from Larry Miller, who I thought was fantastic in this movie, I really loved Larry Miller as uh, Bianca and Kat's father. I thought he did such a great job. Out of everyone, he definitely garnered the most laughs out of me. I thought that he was absolutely hysterical at points. And the thing about him is that, yeah, yeah, he is that typical, you know, overprotective father. But he also, of course, is a doctor. And he's seen this kind of stuff before. And he knows the kind of stuff this can do to teenagers. So he's very smart in that regard. And you can kind of see why he wants to keep his daughter so grounded. Especially why Kat kind of is the way she is. And how even though Kat is, you know, so antisocial, he doesn't really let her have a lot of freedom, and I really did like seeing the arc that his character went through, because he really does go through an interesting arc, and overall, he definitely did do a good job. He really did add to my overall enjoyment of the film. And what's also so great about Larry Miller's performance in the movie is that he was so good in the film, that he was actually asked back for the short-lived TV adaptation on ABC Family of 10 Things I Hate About You, which is crazy to think about, but it really does show how great he really was in this movie. But overall, I thought everyone really did a good job here. I really think this was bad performance to be had in this movie, and for the most part, I really did like all the performances, I have to say. So now let's get to the directing and the writing, because this is a very unique movie, in that, if you guys don't know, it's actually a modern-day version of a Shakespeare play called The Taming of the Shrew, and this, of course, is not the first time it's happened. It's happened with two other movies, and those two films... Yeah, they haven't worked out so well. I mean, I think She's the Man's okay. I've seen that movie before. I think it's an okay movie. I think Amanda Bynes is good in the role for what she does. Um, but Romeo plus Julie is a completely different story. I fucking hate that movie. It's just so weird. It's modern day setting, you know, Boz Lerman type thing. Those didn't work. This, however, does work. Why? Because they didn't try to change it up too much. They didn't try to over-modernize it. In fact, they don't really try to make it like the Shakespeare movie at all. They just say you can do this story in a modern day setting. And I think he did, a, the director here, uh, Gil, um, Junger did a very good job with directing it and putting it in that modern day setting because it actually does work really, really well. The story in Taming of the Shrew is very similar to that of this, and he doesn't try to make it too much like the Shakespeare thing. He pretty much tries to make it stand out on its own, and I really did like the way he did that, because She's the Man did very much try to be like Twelfth Night, and Romeo plus Juliet was Romeo and Juliet just in modern day setting. This wasn't that. This was its own thing entirely, and I really did love the way he did that. I thought the directing here was pretty great. I thought the story he was trying to tell was very relatable, if not more relatable now, uh, you know, basically going against stereotypes and trying to do something like that. I thought it was just a very well done uh, message I thought he did a very good job with that, and the movie was funny. I was laughing const almost constantly throughout this movie. I really did find a lot of fun jokes to be had here, and I definitely really did like the directing and the romance aspect as well. I mean, I really did care for these two couples, and I thought they did a very good job uh, with the directing. And the screenplay here, I really did like the writing. Why? Because I feel like they could have gone in a much more different direction. Um, I think easily you could have made these characters very archetype and very cliche, but the movie did what it could to not do that. It starts off and yeah, I mean, I went into this kind of worry because it does very much start as your typical high school film with, you know, the, the same type of, you know, character beats and things like that you've seen in a million other teen films. However, once they eventually get Patrick and, um, cat together, and these two start to become more comfortable with each other, they really start to explore them more, and I think the movie really is trying to say that, you know, that weird kid, or that one person who, you know, is made fun of a lot, or that person who's just looked at as different, there's really a lot more to them than that. They have specific reasons for why they're not that way, and someone who may view them that way, that's not actually who they are, and I really did like the way the movie did that, because, yeah, everyone has that one kid in high school that's just looked at as weird, or looked at as different, because he doesn't, you know, 
know, acclimate to that, or he or she does not acclimate to that of the times of the other, you know, people in the school. They just don't do that, and that's something that Cat does very well in this movie, but Cat is never, I'd say, a stereotype. I didn't find her to be a stereotype at all. I found her to be just a very uh, confident woman who is honestly kind of smarter than most of the kids in her school because she's not willing to just have sex and party and get drunk. Like, she does make some very good points, and I like the way that was done. Um, and I thought they did a pretty good job with developing with her that I definitely did like the way that that was done um, with their story. I thought, like I said, the romance was very well was very well done in that way. Um, my only flaws with the movie, though, is like I said, the way the story went was extremely predictable. If you think you know where it's going to go, you know exactly where it's going to go. I mean, the second that you see Cameron and he wants to be Bianca and, you know, Bianca wants to be with this guy who's kind of pressuring her. Come on, guys, you, you know how the story goes. If you've seen in a teen movie before, which I'm sure you have, you know exactly where this is going to go, and the same with that of Kat and Patrick. As much as I love their relationship, I knew exactly where it was going to go, and the movie doesn't really try to do anything to deviate from that. I wouldn't necessarily say it bothered me, I just felt the movie could have been a little less predictable than it actually was, um, but... I thought for the most part it worked. I wasn't too upset about it. And I guess the only other thing, like I said, Heath Ledger's accent did go in and out throughout the movie, and it was kind of distracting in that regard. But once a certain revelation is made about Patrick's character, it actually made sense uh, why they did that. You know, not saying Heath Ledger wasn't was bad in this movie. I'm just saying his accent was a little bit distracting. But after the certain revelation is made, then I suddenly felt like, okay, now I get why they went in that direction with him. And then I was completely okay with that. And I thought that actually did make up for um, the poor uh, the poor acting on Ledger's part. It really was not Ledger's fault. It was more of a character choice. And I actually liked that he stuck with it. I thought it was kind of cool the way he did that. Because in another movie, I would have said, yeah, his action goes in and out. But here, it actually was uh, a different type of trait to him. They did something a little bit different. And I was kind of happy the way it turned out. It was really cool, actually, the way that worked out. I thought they did a really good job with that. Um... But uh, I thought the score here was definitely really great. I really did like the soundtrack of this movie. This movie did start I Want You to Want Me. This actually is why that song is so popular is because of this movie. And I thought they did a good job with that. The cinematography was fine. You know, it feels like a 90s movie. You have, you've seen this before. It's very, very uh, teen, you know, cinematography, not really much to say there. And then the editing as well. I thought the editing, the movie really flew by for me. I was into it the whole time. I didn't really feel like there was a dull scene in this movie. And that's something I will give it to its credit. I didn't think there really was a dull scene. I knew we're scenes were going to go, but I wouldn't really say it was dull. Nothing really bothered me about 10 Things I Hate About You. There's really nothing inherently bad uh, about this film, I have to say. So overall, guys, I really did enjoy 10 Things I Hate About You. I think it's a very well done teen film. You want a nice throwback, this is definitely a good one to have. I think this was a very fun movie overall with some very well realized characters. Some that could have been a bit more developed. I really do think that Bianca and Cameron could have been more developed. They could have done more with their story because I did care about them, but I kind of didn't, and that did overall affect my enjoyment of the film. I only really cared about two of the characters in this movie. Um, but for the most part, I did have fun with 10 Things I Hate About You, and I'm gonna, overall going to give 10 Things I Hate About You a 3.5 out of 5 or a B. So overall, guys, for my portion of this review of 10 Things I Hate About You, let me know what you guys thought of this movie overall, loved your thoughts on it. Again, please check out my channel if you haven't before. And now, back to Tony. Thank you so much, Kevin, for reviewing 10 Things I Hate About You. So, 10 Things I Hate About You, I think, is such a charming movie. It's a very fun movie, I think, personally. It's a movie that, while yes, it is predictable, it's a very well-written and a very well-realized movie. This is honestly a film that not only has me engaged, but it's actually very funny. There are so many memorable comedic moments and 10 things I hate about you that just had me howling with laughter. Just the comedic timing in itself was very impressive. So when the comedy was there in 10 things I hate about you, it most certainly worked. But what also worked about this film are the characters. The characters, while they may be characters, of course, you've seen plenty of times in other movies, they're very well-realized characters, and they are characters that you can really get behind. Like with Heath Ledger's character, you see him as this bad boy, the one that nobody really likes, the one that everyone is afraid of. And then once Julia Stiles starts to learn more about Heath Ledger's character, Patrick, that's when we see that Patrick maybe is 
isn't that scary guy that people really view him as. So I thought they explored him well. And then Julia Stiles, uh, her character is different from all the other girls at her school. She's not exactly the one that likes to really do things. So when we see Heath Ledger and Julia Stiles pair up, it kind of makes sense of why they actually paired up. Obviously, Keith Ledger is getting paid to be with Julia Stiles, but then he starts to develop feelings for Julia Stiles as the movie goes on, and that's when the money that he's getting paid uh, doesn't really matter to him anymore. I thought the romance was definitely there. You could feel the chemistry between Heath Ledger and Julia Stiles. Now, when it comes to the performances, Heath Ledger really is terrific as Patrick, and he really fits this kind of role, and Julia Stiles does a really good job in this film, too. You also have Joseph Gordon-Levitt in this film, who's also really terrific. I really thought he did a great job in this film, and his plot was very interesting interesting. He plays this kid that's trying to get the girl of his dreams. The girl of his dreams is Bianca, who is a sister of Julia Stiles' character. And there's a lot of funny things that happened there that I really liked. The actress that played Bianca was really good. I really did like the storyline between her and Julia Stiles because they're so opposite. Bianca wants to do something. She wants to do stuff at high school, but Julia Stiles, she's the opposite. And so Larry Miller, who actually plays their father, he sets up a whole thing that if Julia Stiles doesn't do something, then Bianca can't really do something. And there was a whole funny story going on there. So there are storylines you follow and they manage to be very entertaining. So whether you follow Kat and Patrick or whether you follow Kat, Bianca, and Larry Miller, who plays their father, or you go to Cameron and Bianca's, wherever you're following, it's always very entertaining. And speaking of Larry Miller, before I forget, he is freaking hilarious. He actually might be my favorite character. I think out of everyone, Larry Miller is the one that gave me the most laughs with 10 Things I Hate About You. He really is so terrific. The script is very well written. It is very clever. It's very funny, as I've been saying, because of a lot of the humor. But the script also does a very good job of fleshing out the characters and making these stories that we follow very compelling. Even if the Cameron and Bianca plot might be my least favorite plot, even that plot I still found myself very entertained by. And the soundtrack to 10 Things I Hate About You is terrific. It definitely fits the teen vibe because of it being your teen movie after all it's very well directed the film is very well shot it has just very good cinematography to it and the teacher himself whenever this teacher shows up he is so freaking hilarious he steals every scene he is in and he's not even in the film that much but whenever he shows up i thought he was so funny everyone does a very good job in this film you could just tell that everyone felt very passionate about the script and they really wanted to bring this script to life now the only problems i did have with 10 things i hate about you is like i said this film is predictable now the only problems i did have with 10 things i hate about you is that yes this film is predictable predictable. If you think this film is going to go in a certain direction at the end, it definitely goes there. There's like really no surprises at the end, which I wasn't really expecting, but you could definitely see where the film is leading up to. Sometimes the humor didn't work, and that's really just sometimes. I did feel like the last 10 minutes was rushed because it's not really a spoiler. There is drama that happens, and then everything becomes all of a sudden good again. It felt kind of rushed in regards to that. I also thought Cameron and Bianca's subplot could have been explored a little bit more. I felt like there wasn't really enough when it comes to these two to really show their chemistry. I wish there was more of their chemistry because I did really like it and I bought into it but I wish that there could have been a little bit more of it and the ending felt abrupt the credits just kind of scroll up out of nowhere and I'm just sitting there going oh that was the ending hmm Okay. Overall, you guys, 10 Things I Hate About You is a solid teen comedy. I 
really enjoyed this film. I had a blast with this film. I loved the characters. I really enjoyed their stories. There were so many moments that had me dying of laughter. It's not trying to break any new grounds. It's just a film that's meant to be very fun and very entertaining. That's definitely what 10 Things I Hate About You is. So I'm going to give 10 Things I Hate About You a solid 3 out of 4 stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about 10 Things I Hate About You. And I would also love to thank Kevin Falk for coming here to review 10 Things I Hate About You. He's a very cool dude, you guys. If you guys want to check out his channel, I will leave a link in the description down below. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power.